What's up guys? Today we're going to take a look at Void Linux. Void Linux is another one of those minimalist Linux distributions. It's binary based like Arch, so we don't get the fun of compiling everything like we do in Gentoo. But unlike Arch, Void Linux does not use systemd. Void Linux actually uses Runit as its init system, which I'm sure a lot of people will like, especially those that hate systemd. Void Linux also ships with LibreSSL by default, so there's no complex process to go through like I showed you guys in Gentoo to get LibreSSL working. Void Linux is going to have that right out of the box. And one big difference between Void and other minimalist distros is just how easy it is to install it. Void Linux is easier than, dare I say, Linux Mint, at least in terms of the steps that you actually have to go through and the speed of the installation. So let's get started with it. When you're on Void Linux's main page, voidlinux.org, you can click this link at the top that says download, and this will bring you to the download page. And if we scroll down here, we see that there's a few different tier one mirrors. The first two are in Germany, and the last three are in different places within the US. I'm gonna go ahead and select this fourth mirror, New York. That's gonna be the closest one to me. And when we go to this mirror, we get a pretty minimalist web page here. So what we're going to want to go for here is the live section, and then you want to click where it says current. And then this is going to give you a list of all of the different void Linux ISOs. Now there's a few different choices we have here. You can go with something that's built with muscle. You can go with something that has a GUI or that does not have a GUI. I'm gonna do a pretty straightforward installation though. I'm gonna choose a regular glibc ISO and I'm gonna be using this one, the XFCE edition. So that's gonna come with a desktop environment, but the steps for this should be the same no matter which desktop environment you decide to use. So once you've downloaded that, we can then come on over to VirtualBox and we're going to create a new virtual machine. We'll call it Void Linux. And make sure that the type is Linux and the version is Linux 2.6, 64-bit going to hit next. Now you can set the RAM for Void Linux to be pretty minimalist. Um, I'm going to set it to be four gigs of RAM, but you could very easily get away with using one gig of RAM, possibly even a little less because like I said, it doesn't use system D. So there's not going to be a whole lot of overhead, especially if you're using XFCE. And create a virtual hard disk now. I'm going to do VDI and of course fix size so it'll be slightly faster. Just keep in mind that with fix size, you're not going to be able to expand your amount of storage later. And that's a good location for it. And I'm going to go ahead and give it about 30 gigs of RAM. So we'll create. And now we'll go into our settings and change some things around. First thing I like to do is I like to make my hard disk the first priority. That way I can reboot the system after I've installed it and not have to shut it down and then change the stuff later. I'm going to use two processing threads. Again, not necessary because there's a really minimalist distro. I'm just gonna do that so the installation goes a little bit faster for you guys. Over here in display, I'm going to crank up the video memory to 128 megs and I'm going to switch to VBox VGA. And in the storage section, we're going to select our virtual CD drive, and we're going to want to select that Void Linux ISO that we just downloaded. Okay, so everything is gonna be ready to launch. I think that my machine is going to start off screen, so I'm gonna have to fix that when it launches. Yeah, it always likes to do that. Let's drag this over here and let's go into full screen mode. Oh, looks like it started off screen again. Let's change that to be um, virtual host screen one, I mean host screen two. Alrighty, so this is what you get. 
uh, when Void Linux first launches, well, actually, first you have the splash screen where it lets you choose if you want to start Void Linux or if you want to go into your RAM check or anything like that. So that part just got missed because my virtual box always likes to start on a screen that is not my recording space. That's just what VirtualBox likes to do. And everything is still loading up here. It's taking its time and there we go. So now we are launched into our live ISO. And since we have it with a desktop environment, um, it already comes with a lot of tools installed, basically all the base XFCE stuff. You've got Thunar, your terminal. We've even got a web browser in here. So if you wanted to play around within this um, live environment, there's definitely a lot to do. You've got Firefox here, but I'm just going to jump right into the installation. And this is where Void Linux really kind of shines in my opinion, because like I said, the installation is very straightforward. You just have to run void installer and make sure that you prepend sudo to it because you have to run this command as root. And then it's going to bring up this nice little N curses dialog box here, which is really good. I mean, N curses, uh, if you don't know, it's pretty much what you're seeing here. It's like, it's sort of like a GUI, but not really because it runs inside of your terminal. So it's great for noobs because noobs tend to not really like doing everything through the terminal, but it's also great for people who like minimalist technology because this isn't a real GUI. It's running in our terminal. It doesn't require all the bloat that a full GUI would have. So first we're going to choose our keyboard and they really want you to use uh, ANSI Dov, Dovric, I think is how you say that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna use the US keyboard. So I'm just gonna type U to go down here pretty quickly and then select US. And then for the network, it automatically chose my network adapter. So just make sure it does the same thing for you. It should do that. And yes, I'm gonna use DHCP. So we just tested to make sure that DHCP is working and indeed it is. Next, we're going to choose the source and we're going to make that local. Then we're going to set our host name. I'm just gonna call it void. And now we can set our system locale. And I believe mine is ENUS, right? Let's see, can I do E to get down to it quickly? Here we go, ENUS UTF-8. So that's the same thing you'll wanna choose if you're speaking American English and typing in American English. Then for the time zone, so mine's gonna be America. And let's see if we can get to New York. I think that's the only, it's the only East Coast city I recognize that they have in here. It's a shame that they don't have Boston. You guys should add Boston into that uh, time zone selection as well. Then we're gonna set our root password. And then we're going to create our user account. So this is gonna be our regular user, not our root user. And I'm gonna make that Kenny. And then this is the display name for your user. So I'm just gonna make that Kenny with a capital K. And then we'll choose a password for Kenny. And then you can choose what groups you want him to belong to. So the default is fine for me. All I really need him to be in is the wheel group and the audio group, which he is configured to be in. So we're gonna hit okay. And then we're going to install our bootloader to dev SDA. And sure, we'll use a graphical terminal. And now we're going to partition our disks or our singular disk in this case. All right, and we're going to choose the type as DOS. This is gonna be the same steps for partitioning that we use in Gen 2. So we're just going to do a new. We're going to make it 128 megs. We're gonna make that primary, and we're going to make it bootable. And then we're gonna come here to the other one, 
which is going to be our root and we're just going to give that everything it doesn't need to be bootable then we're going to write the changes to the disk and quit then we're going to go to file systems and we need to choose where we want to mount everything to where we want things to be installed to um, by default it's going to choose uh, dev sda1 for grub so we just need to choose dev sda2 and you can also double check the size to make sure that you're choosing the right one we're going to change that we're going to make it ext4 and then specify the mount point so that's just going to be a forward slash for root and yes we're going to create a new file system and then we're done there now we're going to go ahead and install and it's going to give you this warning that everything is going to be deleted off the disk blah 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 it's a virtual hard disk so i don't really care yes and then void linux is going to do its thing and like i said it's going to do it pretty quickly that's a very straightforward installation and it's going to go faster than linux mint or ubuntu at least it goes faster than linux mint or ubuntu in my system so void linux uses xbps to manage its packages this is an acronym that stands for the x binary package system it was designed from scratch and it's a very fast package manager the only downside to it is that they're not there are not as many packages available in Void as there are in distros like Arch or Gentoo, but I think that that's largely because Void doesn't have systemd support. It's coming with LibreSSL by default. I don't even think it has support for OpenSSL. And there also isn't as much active development going on in Void Linux as there is with Arch or Gentoo. Most kind of... Um, I guess Linux enthusiast, you would say, that I talk to have at least heard of Arch Linux or have at least heard of Gentoo, but I really haven't met anybody other than myself that actually knows about Gentoo. I mean, that actually knows about Void Linux uh, unless I told them about it. So that's probably why there's not as much available to it. All right, and my rambling was long enough for it to install, so let's go ahead and reboot the system now. So it's going to shut down and then come back up. And it comes back up pretty quickly. That's the beauty of Run It. Although, for some reason, the GUI seems like it lags a little bit to load. All right, so we're gonna select our user, Kenny and then go ahead and log in. I keep getting this error for some reason. I don't know what that's about, but the system still works fine. So this is Void Linux. Now to get started with it, to pretty much install anything, you're going to have to update the system first because if I were to try and say sudo xbps install htop, it's not gonna work because HTOP is not in the repository pool. So what we have to do is we have to actually sync our XBPS repository um, with the mirrors for Void Linux. So to do that, you wanna do XBPS install, capital S, lowercase u, and let me make sure I do that as sudo. And it's going to show you everything that it has to download and install. So you see we have the base system, lib, xbps. xbps itself has to be updated. So go ahead and hit yes for it to do its thing. And then you want to run it again. And you see that there's quite a bit more that has to be installed this time, about half a gig worth of stuff. So let's go ahead and run that again. And this one will probably take a little while, but you basically want to keep on repeating the sudo xbps install um, su until it's it no longer does anything. And then when it no longer does anything, you know that it's fully synced and then you can actually start installing some packages. While that's running, I wanna open up another process and I guess we'll do top since we don't have htop. Then that way we can just take a look at 
how our um how our resource usage is going. I really don't like top that much. H top is just it's just so much easier to read H top. It's it looks better, you know. I wonder if it has a bunch of crazy dependencies. Maybe that's why H top isn't loaded by default in so many systems. I can't even think of a system, really, that's had HTOP loaded in it by default. What do you guys think? Do you guys prefer HTOP over top as well? I guess anyone except for the most hardcore minimalist would. I mean, they effectively do the same thing. One just looks better than the other. You know, now that I think about it, this is probably why Void Linux installs so quickly. Because when you do a base installation, you really just aren't installing that much. It's during this uh, update process. This update process is actually taking longer than the initial installation did. Yeah, I think I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, my repository sync is finished. It actually finished about two minutes after I finished, um, I mean, two minutes after I paused the video. So I guess Void Linux really wants to have as much screen time as it possibly can. Let's run this one more time. I don't think it's gonna update anything. Yeah, there we go. So we're fully up to date. And now I can sudo xbps install, uh, not su, htop. So now we're able to go ahead and install HTOP and we can run it and get a better looking uh, idea of how much system is, how many resources are being used within the system. And you can see it's very little. We managed to get an entire GUI XFCE running very newbie friendly in under 300 megs of RAM. Very impressive. Uh, better than Linux Mint, better than Ubuntu, and a hell of a lot better than Windows. Windows wishes it could be as cool as Void Linux. So that's Void Linux, guys. Go ahead and try it out on your own system. Let me know what you think about it. Do you like it? Do you hate it? I would say for myself personally, I give Void Linux... Mm, maybe a B minus. I really like the system, but it just doesn't have nearly as many packages available in it. I tinkered with this a bit to try and install it as a minimalist pen testing distro, and I wasn't able to do it. A lot of penetration testing tools are simply not available in Void Linux. But anyway, hope you guys learned something from this. Peace out.